Hi everyone, on this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at venous air embolisms. What causes them and what we can do about it when we see them in the operating room. So the first thing to understand is that a venous air embolism is functionally, functionally, the same as a pulmonary embolus, because that's what it is, but it's not made of a clot, it's just made of air. At the end of the day, it stuffs up something along the route from the right ventricle to the lungs, be it in the pulmonary artery or one of the two branches. So first we should address the most common time you're going to see this. And the most common is going to be in seated or beach chaired craniotomies. And then less commonly, but also seen in liver surgeries, open liver surgeries. So why does it happen specifically in these two types of cases? There's something very special about the venous system of the brain and the liver. And that is that they are made of sinuses as opposed to vessels. And structurally, the difference is that sinuses are hollow, solid structures, as opposed to veins that are collapsible. And what this translates to is, if you cut your arm, the vein collapses, or any other major vessels, or blood vessels, venous vessels, they collapse under the weight around them and of other fluids getting in and on and around them, but sinuses don't collapse. So that's the first part, is that because they don't collapse, air is able to get into them more easily. Now the next part, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot, is the gradient. When a patient is seated as such, instead of prone, I apologize, supine, there is a pressure gradient that goes from the head down towards the heart. So we'll say the brain is pink and the heart here is blue. And so there is a gradient because gravity is going to work to bring blood from the head down towards the heart. When you're supine or prone, there is no more gradient created by gravity as blood is just as likely to flow because it's all in the same plane. So think of the sinus in the brain as a sink drain. And as water pours into it, and it kind of all swirls around until it all goes down this way. Aside from pulling in water, it's also pulling in air. So the sinus in your brain does the same thing as it goes to travel down towards the heart. So we need to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk mostly about the seated, seated craniotomy in this case. Uh, things that you're going to see to recognize it, so your symptoms. Now, if the PE is large enough, it's going to be something along the lines of hemodynamic instability. Instability, which would be drop in blood pressure and tachycardia. We'll see a decrease in our end tidal CO2 as a result of poor VQ matching because now your flows does not, your Q does not match your V, your ventilation and your Q do not match up because you've blocked off some amount of blood flow to a given portion of the lung. So your end tidal CO2, what the sensor is seen being blown off, is actually now decreased. And finally, patients may become cyanotic or discolored. Now, again, there are other symptoms that would be associated with a PE or a venous air embolus, but because the patient is asleep under general anesthesia, you're not really going to see the other things that maybe anxiety, chest pain, disorientation, dyspnea, etc. So you really have to be quite cognizant of this being a potential thing that could happen, especially in sitting craniotomies. Now it can also happen in lying craniotomies, supine as well, or prone, but it's more common when seated because of the concept here of this increased gradient from your brain to your heart. So now we're going to take a quick look at what we can do about it in the operating room. What to do. 
Step one, always alert the surgeon. Ask him to stop whatever he's doing. Tell him to flood the field with saline because it'll help get saline into the blood, which is fine. So long as it's not air, flood the field. And pack with bone wax. Next, we're going to tell the surgeon that we're going to put the patient into Trendelenburg. So we want their head down. And again, same concept. We want to try and decrease our gradient between the brain and the heart. And if we can make it such that the patient is in this position, so that the heart here and the brain here, and you're reversing the flow as much as you can so that gravity is actually helping you so that one, more air doesn't get into the sinus, but also some may be able to even flow backwards by gravity is what we hope. Three is going to be supportive care of their pressure. A lot of small air embolisms may cause hemodynamic instability shortly, but are short-lived as they will get broken up and, and dissolved and pass through the lungs normally. But other larger ones might not necessarily be able to. So you support the patient, you ask the surgeon to stop, you put them in Trendelenburg, and you try to do your best to keep their pressures elevated and keep them hemodynamically stable. Last-ditch effort is central line placement. with aspiration. And so this is just going to be putting a central line into the SVC and you're basically just going to keep pulling back on it and giving the blood back to the patient until hopefully you pull out a big pocket of air because as you pull blood out it'll pull back hopefully the air bubble will get pulled back, pulled back, pulled back and eventually pulled right out of the heart up into your syringe. Now, if you're getting to this point, it means the patient really probably isn't doing well, and the chances of mortality are very high. Now, I would like to make note, old dogma, and it's no longer accepted, is that they used to put increase positive pressure. And this was done in the form of increasing your PEEP. We do not do this anymore. Big no-no. The reason was found that by increasing PEEP, the thought was that you would force some more of the blood from the right atrium, possibly some of the air, and prevent blood and air from being vacuumed down into the right atrium. So you would try to force the blood out, the same way you would force blood out of the lungs using positive end expiratory pressure. But what was found is that enough patients actually have an undiagnosed PFO or some type of defect. And when you increase intrathoracic pressure, remember the heart is inside the thorax, inside the mediastinum, you're, so you're increasing the pressure all over around it. What would actually happen was if you had any amount of air bubble here, which we'll denote in purple, you could actually push it straight across to the left side of the heart which would then go out to the uh, left ventricle and out to the body and actually cause strokes in patients. So we do not increase PEEP in these patients like once thought. That's my quick discussion on the venous air embolism, how to recognize it, why it happens, and what to do about it in the operating room. Obviously, you should call for help. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to write to us or any topics you'd like covered. We'd love to hear. Otherwise, check in for the next video.